Hi friends and welcome back to Joy with Jen. I am Jen. Happy Thursday everybody. I am so glad to be here. I have a really fun project I'm working on I thought I would share. Now if you are new to my channel um, and maybe have not been exploring around some of my other uh, playlists and some of my other videos on really cool techniques, um, split. Split necklace guys. Um, if Oh my God, if you know me, this is one of my signatures, um, asymmetrical and split. I love them. I do them all of the time. Um, and I have a couple examples here for you, and that's what we're going to get into today. I'm working on the remnants of uh, the Bargain Beadbox for September, the Mystic Moonrise. I have a couple of more uh, projects I'm still going to work on. In fact, I'm going to do a triple strand bracelet next, um, but I want to do a split. I think this is a really cool box for a split because of this insane um, uh, larvikite pendant, right? It's I think it's a 30 millimeter um, labradite, excuse me, I said larvikite, um, this pendant. And I already did some cool wire wrapping on it. Um, a beautiful pendant. Um, everybody's was probably a little bit different, but I just thought that this would look really cool with the split. And so that's what we're getting into. And let me show you a couple examples of splits. I do lots of different um, uh, designs on the, just using the actual split technique. Um, this is beautiful rose quartz. It's got some chain just in the back. Um, it's completely asymmetrical, as you can see, with these disc beads some little rondelles in between them, um, just some insanely beautiful rose quartz. And then I did um, the, uh, I did like a tassel with this beautiful lilac um, bead. Um, I guess it's like a, looks like a tulip. Um, but anyway, I fed some beads actually in the center of it there, made myself a little tassel. We did our focal here and then I began my split. So if you're not familiar with the split, that's where we're going. So that's the split. So there is one, and this one I made. I made this one last year, guys. Um, I actually, in right around November, um, and it sold, and I made, and I just finished making this one. Um, it's just such a beautiful necklace. This um, will go up in my store today. Um, this is the green iris faceted bicones with the beautiful, like a greenish uh, little four millimeter bicone. Uh, so beautiful. Um, and then the split on this one is really, really pretty. It's this beautiful green iris barrel crystal. I put it on a ball and head pan. Um, it's faceted, it's clear on one side. There's the green iris AB on the other. We made this really cool little section here, similarly to what we'll use like in a lasso lariat with our beads. We put um, a crystal focal here and then went ahead and split it from there. So I love it. And then on this one, I use the French wire, which I need to do a tutorial on that. Um, instead of the wire guardians, I'll pull your way up. That is French wire or what they call bullion wire. Um, acts very similarly as a wire guardian. And so that's what that looks like in the back with the cool um, French wire. Uh, so there is that split. And so that's what that one looks like. So that's where we're going, guys. So the supplies that you'll need, um, you can use any beads, guys. You can use any pendant. I just want to show you the um, uh, technique of doing a split thought that would be fun if you're new to my channel or just maybe this will inspire you if you're working on your box still. Um, but you can use any beads, but you will need some specific supplies here, um, guys. Um, and so what you'll need, of course, is some beading wire. I'm going to use the seven strand tiger tail and this gorgeous royal blue because I want to pick up a little bit of the blue here. And there's a lot of blue in my pendant. Um, and the reason I'm going to use seven strand tiger tail on a gemstone necklace is because the gemstones are heavy. They don't need to drape, but I'm also going to be doing half beading and half chain. So the tiger tail will take it. Plus we're using wire guardians to prevent the abrasion on our wire. 
You'll need a couple of wire guardians. I'll use the magical crimp crimper today with uh, a couple of um, two millimeter crimps. Um, I'm going to be using two four millimeter um, jump rings, guys, and that's going to be to attach our chain. I'll use six millimeters on the toggle that I'm using. Here's the toggle that I'm using today. I've pretty much laid out my pattern. Um, I'm using quite a bit from the box, but a few things from my stash as well. Um, so I'm using the Larvakite and the Labradorite beads that came. And then I ended up actually having um, some of my own Larvakite in some six millimeters right here. I'll put you down the mat so you can see um, my design on my beads. So I ended up having um, some of my own uh, six millimeters. Um, so that's what's happening there. That's the wrong bead. Um, and then we've got the Labradorite, um, and then we've got, um, I've got a bead cone or bead cap that we're going to put right here to kind of hug down. And then I have some of my own eight millimeter rondelles in gray right here. And then we're going to do the, um, uh, these are like a rondelle shape larva kite. So I'm going to do four. Five of those, one, two, three, four, five. There's one too many. Uh, we're doing five of those, and then we're gonna hug that section with the bead cap facing down. And then I'm gonna use the eight millimeter gray rondelle. I've got some six millimeter um, uh, rondelles in clear with an AB finish, and some of my four millimeter silver faceted rondelles. Um, I'm, I put those in here because I just think that the clear with the gray and a little bit of the silver, I want this to be more of like the gray and silver tones. Um, I specifically wanted to use the bead caps and the four millimeters here, guys, because it's picking up all that um, big chunky wire wrap that I did in kind of like a cone shape around my panda, which I already did. I just did a simple, you know, wrap around. Some of it's a little bit messy. Um, but that's what I've done there. So, the, and then I did a double twist loop right there. And so that's that. Now, we're going to go ahead and use our teeny tots as well. That's very important when we get into a split. I will show you why in a second. And uh, then, of course, you'll need a ruler and your standard tools. So let's get started. Let me push these out of the way and get you properly in camera here. And I'll zoom you down when we start our split so I can show you if you're not familiar. Um, so what I'm gonna do, guys, oh, and I forgot to tell you about my chain. I'm gonna use some of the box chain I have. Here's my box chain. I actually have this in my store. I'll link it in the video. Um, and I, I think I have these bead caps as well. Um, this is the coolest chain. I just got this on. It's 304 stainless steel Venetian box chain. It's two by two. Um, and I love, love, love it. And I think this is going to go so beautifully with this necklace. And also these bead caps really go with this Venetian chain. Um, hence, we just need two of our little, I already put one on, of our four millimeter jump rings for either side of our box chain because it's just two by two. So it's a little thin, so that's our chain. We'll get to that in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do, guys, is I'm just gonna grab some wire and I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, you can use your ruler and I'll tell you your measurements in a second. Um, we're gonna be doing about that much beading, give or take. I'm just gonna cut that and I'll tell you what that is and I'll get rid of that kink out of the wire. Um, that is just about a 12, 15 inch piece of wire, okay? Um, because we're, as you can see, you know, we're gonna do this much beading, right? And then we'll put the chain on the back. So in order to start a split, guys, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna feed on your focal first. So I'm just going to take my focal and feed it right down one of my wires. And then I'm going to marry at my ends here so I can find my center. Um, now, a split technique, something very important to recognize about a split, 
um, is that once we end up splitting them in one second here, each strand of wire is going to be crimped off independently and be independent of each other. So very, very important to understand that about a split necklace um, because when you're finishing them off, you're finishing them off as an individual strand. So you're tightening up as you're going when you're crimping um, rather than as opposed to how we normally do it, one continuous beading wire um, will be loose on one end, tighten up one end, and then tighten up everything else. We do the opposite um, on a split. So that's what we've got. So I've married up my ends, and then I'm going to pull that down. And now there's my center. So there is my pendant, okay? Now what I'm going to do is now we can split it from here, um, or we can add another focal. And I think I'm gonna try this gray rondelle and I'm gonna feed that down both of my wires here, okay? And see if that looks okay. And again, I chose this blue wire because it's gonna subtly show through on some of the beads. Um, I think it should look really, really cool, some of the clear beads. Um, I think that might be a very cool look, so. I'm kind of thinking I'm digging that. That is pretty cool. So that's the start. And now we begin to split. Now the second important thing, so we have two pieces of wire. So the second important thing to note, guys, is that, well, first of all, you want to uncross your wires. Okay. Um, is you wanna start on the bottom with a bead that is very, very small. That's why I have these guys on the bottom. Because if you start your split, let me get organized, guys. Okay, let me push you back down. This is going that way, okay. If you start your split with too large of a bead, they will buy for attention right here at the beginning and they will not lay correctly. Okay, so it will end up being like this on an angle. Okay, you don't want that. You want it to be nice and flush. So that's why you start with a really small bead. Hence, I have our little teeny tot uh, larvakite and labradorites. And that's what we're going to start with on our split. So I am going to, so I've uh, put on my focal down both my strands. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to feed down two, I think, um, of our little teeny tots here um, and see if that, down each wire, uh, and see if that's enough to go ahead and start adding the bigger beads. I'm doing one larvakite, one labradorite down here. Um, and there we go. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. Okay, so let me lay that down on the mat and pull you down and show you. Okay, so obviously, you know, we'll tighten everything up as we go. But do you see what I mean? When you put your focal on, we put both of our strands together for this rondelle. And then we start with two tiny beads because if we push them all the way down, they will lay right on top of that rondelle. They're not going to vie for attention. Okay, I think they're small enough to accomplish just what we need to get started. Okay, so that's the method to madness to start a split. And from here, we're just going to do some simple stringing in really any pattern that we want. Um, I think I might do another one of the blues here. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go ahead and do some simple uh, beading at this point in the pattern that I chose. And if you want, if you are new to a split, 
uh, type of design and want to fast forward until about probably five minutes from now, <laughs> um, I will show you how we add our wire guardians. We're then going to add our chain. This is just a simple beading portion, guys. You can absolutely fast forward through this section. Uh, only going to take me about another less than three minutes here. Otherwise, we're just basically about there. Okay, so that side is done, and that's what that looks like. And now I'm going to go ahead and feed the exact pattern on the other side. God, these are so hard to find. Them. So tiny, but they're so cute. And so you'll see in just a minute here what I'm talking about with how everything tightens up at the split here. But we got to get both sides on first. I love splits. I think they are the coolest. I don't think they're going out anytime soon. Um, what a beautiful look. It makes it look like your design, no matter what pattern and what beads you're using. Boy, does a split, in my opinion, really almost make it look like something that was so much more difficult than it actually is. And just gives such a beautiful finish to any piece just i love it very unique so i do a lot i have a lot of jewelry in my store um necklaces that are split i've got a couple of bracelets actually too i don't know if they're still up or if they're sold um and that split as well so that ought to tell you that they are certainly popular and we are done with all of our beads as well so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this out of the way, okay? And so I'm gonna pull you up a little bit here and show you this is what we have, okay? That's what we've got. Okay, so as you can see, at my split here, this one I'm talking about, this is what you want your tiny little beads to be laying right on top of your focal that begins your split. So that ended up working out because I'm pulling them tight to the, at the top here and I'm pushing them down and they are both laying flat beautifully. Okay, so that's what that looks like at the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and finish this up and then we'll go ahead and add our chain. Now, like I said, our box chain, guys, is not going to fit on my wire guardian, so I got to use a four millimeter jump ring for that. So I'll go ahead and I'll finish up one side first since I have a jump ring on one side of my chain, and then we'll get the ruler and figure out our measurement. So we'll go ahead now, guys, and feed on a crimp, and now we'll go ahead and feed on our wire guardian. If you're using any other kind of chain, this is where right now, if I can get it through, right now is where you will feed your chain on. If you have any other kind of chain that'll fit through, most chain will, um, you'll want to go ahead and feed that on right now. So it's right on your wire guarding. It's going to give it a better pro finish, be nice and uh, secure. Okay. So got my wire guardian on. Now I'm going to go ahead, feed my tail through the crimp and my first speed. I'm going to go ahead and pull that tail. Okay. Now what I'm going to do guys is I am going to separate my strands out here and I am going to be paying very close attention right here at the moment 
to see that everything is in place. So my pendant and then my bead that's on top of it. And then I'm just looking at this side right now, making sure that that bead right there is pushed and sitting way down right on top, right where it needs to be. Right on top of that. Let me pull you down and show you what I'm talking about because you see this side I haven't done yet, right? So you can see how there's some space while well, I'm working on this side. So I wanted to make sure that that bead is laying right on top of that gray rondelle and it is, and that's perfect. And so now we can go ahead and crimp it off. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we'll use the magical crimper today, like I said. And let's see here. Okay, and it's all done. We'll go ahead and trim the excess. And now I am going to grab some chain nose. Let me open up that jump ring. And then we'll go ahead and add this to our wire guardian. And we can go ahead and finish up the other side uh, before we cut the chain and grab the ruler. So I'll go ahead and add my wire guardian right there to that jump ring where my chain's already on. And then I'll go ahead and close up my jump ring. So that's all done. Now we're gonna go ahead, do the same thing over here. We will put on a crimp and then we'll feed our wire guardian on. And I'll pull you down to the mat again one more time just to show you once again how to tighten up. So um, again, we're tightening up two necklaces one necklace, two strands, as if they are individual necklaces, okay? So what I'm looking at is my split, right? So I've got my wire guardian on here, right? And so I'm going to be wanting to pull my tail as tight as I can until my bead basically touches that other rondelle and is parallel to the other bead, not on a diagonal. That's what you don't want. And it looks to me like that is pretty darn good. And so I'll go ahead and pull that just a smidge more. And that looks pretty good to me. Perfect. There's no gaps. Looks nice and tight down in our section here. So we can go ahead and crimp. And so we'll get our magical crimper. And we'll go ahead and crimp this guy off. going round and round. If you're not familiar with the Magical Crimper, I do offer these in my store um, as well. I'll link it in the video. Um, and I also uh, link it in the box. Um, but I also have a really cool video um, on, I think it's called Meet the Magical Prim Crimper or something like that. It's in my Jewelry 101 playlist, guys. If you are interested in having a quick tutorial, a jewelry 101 about 
the Magical Crimper. You will find that there in that playlist. Okay, so I've got that all crimped off. Let me go ahead and flush cut that. And then let's grab the ruler, get the ruler involved and see what we need for a chain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going, when you're measuring a split, guys, um, I'm wanting this to be right around 20-ish inches. I don't want this to be too long, if I'm being honest. So what I'm gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna measure from where your split begins. So don't measure from your pendant. Measure from where the split starts, which is at the top of the rondelle, because this obviously is the part that goes around the neck, right? So that's where I'm gonna measure from. So if I want it to be 20, and right there, okay, so, let me flip this the other way since I've already got chain on this side. Then I wanna get up to probably around the 10. And so I'll go ahead and cut my chain there at the 10. And you know, we can allocate also probably half inch or so for our toggle. So if we wanna be exact though, but that doesn't need to be exact, though. I think we'll be good about right here. And of course, it's stainless steel chain, so very difficult to cut, but I got it. And you can see I'm left with a tiny, tiny little loop. And this is where we will grab our chain nose, put on another um, jump ring. There they are. Couldn't find my tool. Uh, we will put on another four millimeter jump ring. Well, first of all, I guess it'd be helpful if I got rid of all of that, or I just cut it. We certainly don't need that hanging out. Okay. And so we'll add a jump ring onto the end of that chain. And then we'll put that on the wire guardian on the other side of my necklace. And then we'll go ahead and close that up. Okay, and so that's what I've got. Okay, and now we'll do the same thing on this side. We're almost done. Down to the cut in this side and add in the clasp. And so, I will now go ahead and just, I can either use my ruler again or I can eyeball it and make it go straight across from the other side, you know, which sometimes I do use my ruler for that. Everything looks pretty straight right here and right here, so I'll just cut that right there. Okay, excelente. And we will just go ahead and finish it off now, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, I hope you'll pop over to my store as well and take a look around and see. I've got some really cool 304 stainless steel chain up. Um, I also have the wire guardians. I've got some cool wire up, some beading wire. Um, I do have some of these beads, some of the rondelles I do carry in my store. Um, if you are interested, um, I will, of course, link my store in the video as well as 
you can click the shopping tab. Okay, so I grabbed a six millimeter jump ring here and it might actually be too thick to get through this two millimeter chain. I'm, I'm a trying, but I don't think so. That's okay. So we will pivot and we'll use an oval. I think an oval would be a good decision here. Um, we'll use a five millimeter oval. That's a good decision because obviously the opening is on the side and um, lessens the weak point. So I'll bet you this will fit through as it will. And I'm just gonna make sure that's good and closed. And now I'll go ahead and add my six millimeter and my toggle. I don't typically do dangles. Now you could if you want to put some dangles back on your jump rings at the back of your necklace. Um, I typically do not on a split. Um, it's just, you know, a design thing, but you can certainly have freedom to do and you know anything you want. Whatever looks pretty to you, that's what you do. Whatever, you know, looks aesthetically appeasing to you, that's, that's what you do. Freedom of design. Um, but for me, I don't. And the reason I don't is because the split is usually such a statement and that this necklace is certainly no exception for the simple fact of all of this, these beautiful gemstones, never mind that panda. So this has got a lot going on um, to draw the eye. So I'm good. I don't know why this is not wanting to go through. The other one certainly didn't give me any trouble. Okay, there we go. Um, so there's so much to draw the eye at the front of this necklace. And also it's very gemstone heavy, obviously. Um, I don't want any more weight on it. Um, but also I just, I don't know, like I said, I typically just, I don't put dangles on my splits. Most of the time I also use crystals. I either use crystals or gemstones when I'm doing a split, but just me. All right, my friends, happy Thursday, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope this inspires you to make a split. That is our final product. Let me pull you way up so you can see what's happening here. That is what we have. Absolutely stunning. If you ask me, uh, that is just a beauty. I am in love with this box chain. And so that's what we have. That's what that looks like. So beautiful. This is actually going to go up in my store, I feel. It's just really, really pretty. I don't think I have any Larvakite in, or Labradite. I don't think I do in my store right now. So I think it. he needs to go and make somebody else happy. <laughs> Such a beauty. Okay, guys, until next video, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. You can always share my videos or save them for later if you're a beginner to do a split. I hope I explained that well for you. <laughs> and until next time, friends, be blessed.